Some of you might have been to a sumo promotion party. Most of you probably haven't. Seven years ago this week, I was fortunate enough to attend one, and as we don't hear much about these on the internet, I'd like to share the story with you. To attend a wrestler's promotion party, you either need to have a direct connection to that person's stable, or with their supporters club, Koenkai. If you happen to be a Koenkai member, that's great, you'll be the first to get an invite. But if, like me, you're not, you either have to pray or cad your way in. Luckily, a member of Kisena Sato's Koenkai contacted me in November 2011 to ask about translating my sumo blog posts, and then casually asked if I wanted to go to his Ozeki promotion event. That was my in. So, as per her email, the Koenkai member puts my name on the official guest list, along with the names of other friends of hers. She reminds me that it's a BYOE party. That's right, bring your own envelope, with three 10,000 yen banknotes neatly placed inside of it. That's about $300. Uh, that's the standard donation for people of no real standing. Obviously, those closer to the Ozeki should donate more, sometimes much more. The important thing is that enough money is collected so that all food, drink, rental costs, and party gifts are covered with something to spare. Now, of course, no member of Kisenasado's stable is directly going to say, show me the money. That would be undignified. So the responsibility is on the Koenkai members to discreetly inform non-members how much money they should bring. As for an envelope, well, it depends on how much you're giving and how fancy you want to be. But for a regular guest, something like this will do, with the Japanese characters for celebration on it. Like so. Okay, so the date is Saturday, February the 4th, 2012, the time... 6 p.m. Uh, these events normally attract over a thousand guests, far too many for a stable building. So where do they all gather? Usually at a plush hotel in central Tokyo. For his Ozeki party and indeed his Yokozuna bash five years later, Hisenasato's stable opted for the Hiten Banquet Hall of the New Takanawa Grand Prince Hotel. The Hiten Hall is huge, over 2,000 square meters, thus easily big enough to accommodate the large number of invitees and 50 wide-bodied sumo wrestlers. It also has a peak ceiling height of 23 meters, its grandeur reinforced by the chandeliers hanging from it. Hiten actually refers to a Buddhist celestial being. Keep following the ceiling upwards and you might actually see them flying and swimming around in heaven. The hotel's location isn't bad either, just a stone's throw from one of Tokyo's busiest and best connected stations, Shinagawa, and yet far enough up the hills of well-to-do Takanawa not to be disturbed by train engine noise. So, having entered the giant hotel complex, the guests make their way down a winding slope lined with giant floral arrangements, similar to those you might find every time a new office or shop opens. Each flower display has been donated by a well-known company or celebrity, presumably for the prestige. You can find their names on the wooden panels. Florists will fall over each other to be involved, and some companies even specialize in providing flowers for such events. Expect to pay hundreds of dollars for their services. At the foot of the flowery slope, you will find the party reception desks staffed by members of the stable and group of stables. You hand your enveloped money over to the person responsible, possibly an ex-wrestler if you're lucky, and then enter the magnificent hall. In many ways, it's every sumo fan's dream. Drinks to the left of you, food to the right, and your favorite wrestlers and ex-wrestlers wherever you look. They have to be on their best behavior, given the nature of the occasion, so if you want to talk to them, this is a prime chance. The surprising thing is how well-mannered they are towards the normal-sized folk when moving around the hall. Akoto Shogiko and Takekaze even going so far as to say, I'm terribly sorry, would you mind letting me through, when stuck in the crowd. The evening begins with a standard readout speech from a sumo director, on this occasion Kokonoe Oyakata, whose congratulatory words are then echoed 
by a number of Sumo's most eminent supporters. Now, on first glance, a group of old men giving speeches at a Sumo party might seem a sight so damn ordinary that it's not even worth writing about. But if you look at who these people actually are, you get a priceless insight into where Sumo gets its vital support from. Our first speaker is Kunio Anzai, ex-president of 16,000 employees at Tokyo Gas and also head of Sumo's management committee at the time. He liked to follow in the footsteps of his father, Hiroshi Anzai, both as chairman of Tokyo Gas and as chairman of the Futagoyama Stable Supporters Club. As Kisena Sato's deceased stable master, ex Yokozuna Takano Sato, hailed from Futagoyama, we can clearly see why Anzai was so interested in Kisena Sato's progress. It is a fine illustration of how the Supporters Club model works. Fathers passing on Koenkai responsibilities to sons, and stable masters ensuring that those sons look after the next generation of wrestlers. I could tell you much more about the immense power wielded by the Anzai family another day. The next speaker is Takuhiko Tsuruta, ex-president of Nikkei Newspaper Inc., a rather influential set of publications, and a native of Ibaraki Prefecture, from where Kisena Sato hails. The fact he happens to be chair of the Yokozuna Deliberation Council at the time certainly doesn't stop him from delivering a partisan rallying cry. When I see Kisena Sato's well-endowed physique, I can't really imagine him losing, Suruta begins. But he sometimes tries to go for the win too quickly. Let's see him get two titles in a row and make a Japanese Yokozuna of him. Tsuruta is then followed by Masao Seki, chairman of Kisena Sato's Supporters Club and president of the 110-year-old Seki Trading Company, one of the first in Japan, I believe, to get oil trading rights. Next comes another scripted speech from Kisena Sato's new coach, the photo of the deceased stable master watching his every word in the background. And, last but not least in the opening round of speeches, is Kisena Sato himself, who tells a highly expectant crowd, When going for Ozeki promotion straight after my coach's death, I concentrated on four things. To never let my emotions show in victory or defeat, no matter how tough it got or how sad I felt. To believe in my own words. To be confident in battle. And to fight calmly. Consensus remains that had his ex-coach lived longer, he would likely have reached Yokozuna sooner and fared better. But sumo history is littered with such ifs and maybes. It was a two-hour party, and the first 50 minutes had already been taken up with the speeches, something which one guest alongside me described as a part of Japanese culture, both touching and annoying in equal measure. Everybody there is desperate to eat, drink, and mingle with their sumo heroes, and the initial toast serves as the cue to do just that. We have some musical interludes from both the pop and sumo genres, and also interventions from the world of showbiz, courtesy of ex-newscaster Hitoshi Kusano, a great sumo wrestler in his university days, and the actress, dancer, and all-round entertainer Yukiji Asaoka, wearing a very nice kimono too. The highlight of the night is when all the Yokozuna and Ozeki of the day pack the stage to help Kisena Sato crack open a giant barrel of sake, the classic celebratory gesture known as Kagami Biraki. Wrestlers and dignitaries take the first sips before the rest is parceled out on a first-come, first-served basis. The night ends with Kisena Sato shaking hands and posing for photos in the lobby, filling hundreds of hearts with special memories as his proud parents watch on. And no one gets to leave without going through the imposing cordon of wrestlers and support staff handing out goodie bags, each containing, among other things, two bottles of wine produced in Kisena Sato's hometown of Ushiku, and each bearing an image of their new Ozeki's face. The party was only seven years ago, but many of the guest speakers have already since died. It just goes to show that you really do only have one chance to experience that kind of event 
with those people in that setting at that stage of their lives. Enjoy the ride while it lasts.